Okay, so you've probably clicked on today's video wondering how on earth I've managed to generate over $10,000 in sales from complete organic free traffic and that is just in the last 30 days. A lot of people will mention uh, organic traffic from TikTok ads or just TikTok in general. This isn't the case in this video. It's something slightly different and something you want to be implementing into your online business so you are getting some free traffic that you're not having to pay for and most of the time it converts really, really well. And I'm going to be showing you how you can basically just improve and do a few things to improve your product pages on your Shopify store so you can begin to get better uh, traction with your organic traffic, you know, more visitors. And I'll show you a quick tip with Google Analytics and how you can exactly track the progress of your organic visitors from Google. Now, just before we jump into how you can actually do this, I'm just going to give you a bit of context and just show you the results I've achieved over the last 30 days from organic traffic, just from Google. It's not organic traffic from Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, it is purely free traffic from the Google search engine, whether that be free clicks from just, um, you know, search listings or shopping listings. To simply summarize, it is just free traffic that I've not paid for. Now jumping into my first Google Analytics account here, this is for my UK store. I'm just gonna quickly uh, filter this to the last 30 days. Um, you can see on the left-hand side that all you need to do is go to the acquisition part, select all traffic, source slash medium, and then you'll be able to see where exactly your traffic's coming from and if you've got everything set up correctly it will even tell you how much revenue each traffic source has generated you so you can see my top one obviously is google cpc which is obviously google ads and that's everything in google ads that's just from my account in general but the one we want to be focused on here is number five you can see this is google and then organic in the last 30 days i've obviously you can see two and a half or just under two and a half thousand visitors scrolling across you've got other data as well like average time a person's on your website and you can see it is one of if not the highest outperforming the actual um, ads I'm running on Google and Facebook so almost two minutes per user is a very very good and high number so it shows that these organic uh, results are appearing in the right places and the people clicking them are sticking around for a while and you can see as well the conversion rate on this organic traffic is just over three percent again you can see this is almost double any anything else on here with 102 transactions in the last 30 days generating me six and a half thousand pounds which in today's money is probably about $7,300 or something. So that's the UK site with Google Organic. Now just hopping over to the analytics on my American website, you can see it's a little bit further down. I'm not getting as many uh, monthly visitors as my UK site. But as if you've watched previous videos, you'll know my UK site is quite a lot older than my US site. So this is something that just gradually increases over time. But nonetheless, still I've had 650 visitors in the last 30 days from organic traffic. But you can see here the average session duration for the US site is well over three minutes which is very impressive again looking at the other things like at the top Google cost per click so my Google Ads average session is just over a minute but organic traffic from Google is over three minutes which is obviously very good and the conversion rate for this organic traffic is 5.25 percent almost double my UK which is really good so once this scales up a bit more and once you know uh, the site matures and things like that this will be a very very good income source for the business just over 50 transactions in the last 30 days but obviously my AOV is a lot higher on my US site generating $5,500 in revenue. So add those together, that's about $12,500 in revenue in the last 30 days from organic free Google traffic. And I'm gonna be showing you some very simple changes you can make to your store so you can over time gradually build up this source of organic traffic. It's not something that's gonna work overnight, but it's worth spending a little bit of time on. So in two, three, four months time, you'll start to see some sales coming in every single day from free traffic because at the end of the day, it all adds up very nicely. So you can see, you know, simple Simply use Google Analytics to track your organic sales progress. It's a very simple thing to set up and I'm pretty sure most of you who are already getting sales from ad platforms probably have Google Analytics set up. But if you haven't, I can make a video on that in the near future as well. But there's plenty out there already for you guys to check. So I've broken this down into three key steps that you can easily follow. Number one being have an active Google Merchant Center account. This will allow your products to appear on the shopping network on the free listing section and not just the paid section, meaning you're going to get shopping clicks for free now we're just going to use the corner desk product here as a quick example now let's just get rid of this right here all of these shopping listings you can see on your screen those are paid shopping ads that people are running from their google ads account but if you click the actual shoppings tab here at the top of google again these top listings here are the ads even says obviously ads here but all these listings here are what is known as free listings and you can track the progress of how many clicks you're getting in google merchant center from your free listings and it's literally just under the performance tab 
in Merchant Center, you can break it down, look how many free clicks you're getting from that. So I reckon about 20 to 30% of the free traffic I'm getting from Google is from the free listings with the help of Merchant Center. So if I were to click on this product here, for example, it wouldn't cost, you know, AliExpress actually any money because it would be a free listings click. It's just these ones up here that are the Google ads that obviously people are running and that is what they'll be charged for. So if I click this one, for example, that person, Wayfair, will be charged when I click their ad. Again, if you're watching this video, because it's Google related, I assume you have an active Merchant Center. You don't need to do anything in Merchant Center to enable free listings. It will automatically start showing your products for you as long as there's no issues with them. If there's no errors on your products, it will Google will basically push your products to free listings. Now, number two is arguably the biggest point of this video, and that is utilizing the SEO titles and descriptions within your Shopify product editor. I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and we will be using uh, the corner desk thing as an example here. So I'm just going to pull up a Shopify product page here. Obviously, it's a brand new one. Now, I honestly think a lot of people just ignore this, but when you get to the bottom of your editor, you can see a search ending, a search engine listing section here, otherwise known as meta tags or meta title and description or SEO title and description. I like to refer it to the SEO title and description for your product. Now, you can basically enter up to 70 characters in the title, 320 for the description. People usually leave this blank. And what that basically means is Google is just going to take your Shopify product title and the description here, which isn't always going to be the best for your SEO and won't get you the biggest reach for organic traffic. It's this bit here. You want to be ramming loads of keywords related to your product, essentially putting yourself in front of more eyes on the Google network. Now, some people do this by literally bullet pointing keywords in the description, especially because there's more space. I recommend at least making this description, you know, grammatically correct and something that actually reads correctly and not just putting corner desk, desk, you know, L-shaped desk, you know, bullet point after bullet point. I've tested that before and in my personal opinion, it doesn't particularly work very well. You want to have a well-structured description, but make sure you are including a good variety of keywords linking to your product. And that's a key thing here. Make sure the words do link to the product. You know, you might think by adding a slightly irrelevant, big, broad search term into your description will help give it the reach. But at the end of the day, if you're doing that, that product could then appear in front of the wrong people and then you're just not going to get any clicks. And if Google sees, you know, they're pushing these organic and free links and stuff to these people if people aren't clicking them that will essentially make you rank lower and it just won't do yourself any favors so make sure you are including relevant information within the title and description i'm going to cut back i'm just going to create an example for a corner desk seo title and description just so you can see the pattern i follow and how i like to structure it okay so just jumping back here i've made a quick example of an seo title and description for an l-shaped corner desk um i don't know why that product it was just the first thing that uh, popped into my mind when making the video but you can see here in the title we've uh, almost broken it down into two parts i always like to use these little dashes here just to break it up a little bit um, i've gone for a white l-shaped corner desk small modern computer desk for office again you can kind of see what i'm doing with this here clearly saying what the product is the size of it whether it's modern chic you know vintage that type of thing and where it can be used like an office now i'll be showing you in a second how exactly you're going to find these good search terms to include them into your title and description for the description you can see I've done modern corner desk is available in a gloss white finish perfect for your home office this l-shaped desk is small and suitable for rooms of all sizes our computer desk is made from a sturdy oak wood it's small and makes a great work from home slash home office desk for work and study this desk also includes three drawers you kind of get what I've done there like I said a few minutes ago it's not necessarily just bullet point after bullet point you can see I have kind of structured it in a way that it does kind of make sense now if I had a bit more time here and I wasn't doing this just off the cuff this would look a little better but you get the idea anyway from what i've just done now going back to the three key steps the third one is using google keyword planner now this is how you're going to be finding those good keywords to put into your titles and descriptions so just hopping back over here um you'll be able to access google keyword planner for your google ad account and you can see i'm just doing search terms for the uk i've just put in corner desk home office desk and desk in general and you'll be able to see the monthly search results for these search terms you can see very very uh high volume volume here and you can literally just scroll down here and include some of these terms within your SEO title and description so if you're selling a standing desk it's a great one to put in you can see I've put 
put in the word sturdy in my SEO title. It's something that only gets four and a half thousand monthly searches, but that is still quite a lot. And adding that simple word and term in there definitely helps a bit as well. I've also added things like I mentioned how many drawers there are. So even this term here has over 12,000 monthly searches. So that's another good thing to include. Another one that is always good to include that I haven't actually done in this case is whatever the product is, putting the word best in front of it. So you can see best standing desk has 1,300 a month. People like to search for it because if they're clicking a product after searching best standing desk, back of their mind, you know, subconsciously, they're clicking a product that they think is going to be the best standing desk. So just something to bear in mind and include in there as well. But you get the idea. This is essentially a free tool to use and you can use it. And I recommend going through every single product on your store. It is very tedious. It's very boring. But if your business is a business that has been running for quite some time already and you haven't done this, you need to do this. Even if um, as well, you're just starting out. I recommend doing this because if your business is successful and it keeps growing, this is an extra avenue of free sales that you're not having to pay for. All you're having to do is sacrifice a little bit of time just to put in a bit of effort going through all your products and making those SEO titles and descriptions as keyword rich as possible. Now, once you have done that and you've uh, typed in the title and description here, all you need to do is click save and that's literally it. The only other thing to consider is to make sure with your Google Merchant Center that these SEO titles and descriptions within Shopify are transferred over to your Merchant Center as well. You know, if you use a data feed app to push your product feed to Google, it's very self-explanatory. You just resync the product with that app and it will essentially automatically do it for you. Now, I've just made a quick note, building out multiple organic as well as paid avenues of traffic will all add up and help the overall performance of your business. Relying on one single traffic source, whether it is organic or paid, is never going to end well if something were to happen with it. We've all been there with Facebook ads two, three years ago. You're getting consistent results. You're doing really well. Then you wake up, your ad account's banned or your personal account's banned. That's it. Sales stop, you know, game over. But it's the same with something like Bing ads. That spends for me $10, $20 a day, but it will get me 30 to 60 sales a month and on a very minimal spend. So add that, add my Google organic, even Pinterest, I'm starting to generate sales with paid and organic as well. So adding all those up, it's gonna increase your profit margin because traffic sources like this aren't costing you any money and ultimately will grow your revenue and customer base as well. So like I said, it's a very boring task, but to push your business further, it's something that I highly recommend and something you can clearly see in the last 30 days, generated me over $12,000 in free traffic sales. And one last thing guys, please use high quality images, stand out from the competition. This specifically goes to the free uh, shopping listings that I mentioned at the start of the video. Having a good product image on Google, especially Google Shopping, is key because you want to stand out from your competition. Loads of products still with Google will just use a blank white background image. If you are using white background images and you're not seeing great results, just try a lifestyle image of the product. For me, they work a lot better. But anyway, that can be a complete video on its own, but I just wanted to add it in the end here. So other than that, guys, that is it from me today. Any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. If you are new around here, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.